Well, you know, in the in the scripture it says he threw the axe into the water. Well, maybe Earl and Max got to do that. Show, <laughs> show that axe into the water and see what comes floating up. So, anyway, good morning, everyone. And I want to welcome everyone here this morning. Welcome those watching online. And we just praise the Lord because this is the day the Lord has made for you. Amen. It's going to be the greatest day of your life. So we Amen. thank the Lord for that. So I got a little story this morning just before we get into um, our teaching this morning. Um, this was not Sam Gladman's, but this, this is Sammy in this story. So... Sammy asked his mother if he could fill her, his little pool, his little plastic pool with water. And she agreed it was a nice day out that she, he could do that. So she was kind of watching out the kitchen window what was going on as he's filling that pool and that. So um, she was amused at first when she see him lift up the family dog, take him over to the pool, and dunk him in. Dunked his head in. A moment later, she sees him with the pet rabbit <laughs> going over, takes the pet rabbit, dunks it in, lets him go, you know. So she's getting a little bit concerned, getting a little bit curious what's going on. And so she's watching. All of a sudden, she didn't see anything else happening. And little Sammy comes running in, and um, the mother went back doing her chores, chores and she, Sammy come running in, and he says, Mama, can you please help me? The cat doesn't want to get baptized. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we got to watch who we're trying to baptize. So, so we thank the Lord. You know, um, we're going to do a little bit of a teaching this morning. Not a little bit of teaching. We're going to do quite a bit of teaching this morning. And we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do something a little different. You know, like, what is that? Change. Change. That's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to do change, a little bit of change this morning. You know, we've been using Andrew uh, Walmack's studies a lot, great studies and everything, and we used uh, the men's uh, study. We used, uh, yes, uh, Gunner, you can pick them up after all. <laughs> so anyway, um, and we use that financial stewardship from Andrew Walmack in the men's study, and I guess the women used it also. And he taught a lot on, on financial stewardship. What is a steward? What is, when you talk about stewardship, we have to make sure we understand what stewardship is. You know, right away, when you hear the word stewardship, you start thinking financial. You start thinking money. But stewardship is more than that. It's more than just those, those things. And, and, you know, we went through that in the men's study to... So we got a good understanding what stewardship was. Well, anyway, today we're gonna do we're gonna do a DVD, and this is from Pastor uh, Robert Morris. He wrote a book, Blessed Life. He wrote that book 17 years ago, and he wasn't obedient to God right after he wrote that book, because God was telling him he needed to write a sequence to that book, which is called Beyond Blessings. Well, he's come out and wrote that book now. He's wrote this book, Beyond Blessings. So we're going to play this DVD this morning. He's going to be teaching us um, we, we need to get to give. Sometimes we have it the other way around. We, we need to give to get. But he's going to teach us we need to get, we need to, get to give. And we, don't, and we don't give to get. So a lot of people, a lot of churches have that. They preach and preach and teach, oh, you got to give, you got to give, you got to give so you can get, so you can be blessed. Well, Pastor Morris is going to, with this DVD today, he's going to give us some teaching on that. So um, we're going to, you know, we could release, we just got Sam and Gunner and Tony, but, you know, when we do that, then I'm taking away the opportunity when we do our tithes and offerings, that they won't be in here. So I'm going to ask them to stay in until we do the tithes and offerings. We're going to play the DVD. It's, it's, uh, it's not a long DVD, but we'll play that, and then we'll do our tithes and offerings. So uh, uh, soundboard, bring it up, and we'll 
we'll do that. So, Robert Morris here on Praise. Whenever you're sitting here on the Praise set, Robert, I my my first inclination is to remind the viewing audience of what happened when my father, Paul Crouch, mm -hmm. before he passed away, he looked at uh, a production that Pastor Robert had done. He showed it to Lori and me and the boys. He had a DVD set. He had got it somewhere. And it was your first book um, that was Bless Life. Yeah. He had it. He had the book. He had a teaching series. I don't know how he got it. He held it up to me and he said, Matthew, this is the guy that has brought balance to the teaching of giving in the body of Christ. You know, the blessed life, beyond blessed is what we're talking about. And this is a fulfillment of a my dad's mandate, you know, kind of one of these grab by the collar. And he pointed this out and said, get this teaching and get it out because it is uniquely different. Why don't we jump into the meat of what we're really talking about in this book and, okay. and how it affects people and all of us. In okay, so, so I'm going to start with the first book, The, the Blessed Life, and the, the difference that your father saw in The Blessed Life and that Lori talked about was that I teach that we get, get to give, we don't give to get. Got it. And what happened in the body of Christ for a while is that we begin to teach, give and you'll get, give and you'll get, and so people started saying, well, I want to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm going to give. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I, I can just imagine the father up in heaven thinking, oh, this is so exciting. My people are catching the revelation of getting. Wow. Because oh. we weren't really preaching giving. Yeah. We were preaching getting. Got it. And if you think about it, why did God invent, I'm going to use that word, giving in the first place? Because you didn't invent it. No preacher invented it. God did. It's all through Scripture. Why? He did it to work greed and selfishness out of our lives. Wow. You know, uh, he didn't do it to support the work of his kingdom. He doesn't need our support. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's wow. crazy. He wow. owns everything. You know, God says, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. In other words, if I'm hungry, I'll eat one of my cows. Yep. I don't need any of yours. I'll eat one of mine, you know. Got it. So, uh, so he invented it to, or came up with it to work greed and selfishness out of our lives. I think Satan got in because God does reward us when we give. That's a truth, too. When we give with the right heart, he does reward us. That is a truth. But I think Satan gets in and just twists things, and he twisted it to where all of a sudden our motive was getting, and that's not what God blesses. And so what happens is we actually start greed and selfishness get stronger in our lives. Wow. Instead of getting out of our lives. So I wrote the book to help us understand that Yes, God will bless us when we give with the right motive. Okay. And then that book, um, hundreds of thousands of copies self-published, and then millions through the publisher, languages all over the world. But I, I started getting these emails from people saying, hey, I'm giving, but I still have credit card debt. Hmm. And I, I felt like I, I wrote a book on combing your hair, but no, I didn't write a book on grooming. So in other words, I wrote on giving, but I didn't write on finances. And here's what I mean by that. There's more to grooming than simply combing your hair. You want to wash it, you know. Yeah. Uh, you you want to bathe. You want to use soap. You want to use deodorant. You want to use cologne and perfume. Okay. So people are writing me saying, you know, I'm combing my hair, but I still stink. Well, there's a reason <laughs> for that. Wow, that was because a I didn't. I, yeah, I didn't write a book on grooming. I wrote right. a book on simply combing your hair. So that's why it was. I wrote a book on giving. And yet they were saying, but I still have financial problems. Got it. And I was thinking, yeah, but there's another reason. So for 17 years, it was 17 years ago I wrote The Blessed Life. Wow. I've wanted to write the sequel. And for some reason, God just now allowed me to do it. So this book is on stewardship, on managing your finances. Mm -hmm. And here's what people need to know. God wants to bless us to get the resources to, to the people who need it. Okay. So if there's a person who's a, uh, a good steward, but he's not generous. We call that person tight. Okay. So why would God bless that person? Because he's trying to get the resources over here. But in the same way, if there's a person who is generous, but he's not a good steward, why would God bless that person? Wow. Because he's going to waste what God gives him. He's not going to manage it. He's not going to know where it goes. 
So this book is about not only how to manage your finances, but why to manage your finances. And I really believe it's going to help motivate people. Most people live with financial stress, and God never designed us to live with financial stress. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's what this book is about. And, and so you've written basically the book on generosity, okay? Mm -hmm. And most people, I, you know, I don't know if when you're in, a, in an airport, if somebody calls out your name or they just say, blessed life, I don't know, you know, I mean, because sometimes people just say TBN, hey, TBN to us, you know. Yeah. And, and so. Church lady. <laughs> had that too. I am not and the church so, lady. <laughs> and so ultimately, the book on generosity, uh, and this is now the companion. All of the information will be popping up and down uh, as you're watching this. We're going to unpack it for you with Pastor Robert Morse. And we're putting a spotlight on the vital importance of your support of TBN's global mission to reach people all over the world with the good news of Jesus' love and grace, of blessing. Plus, click right now to share and request your thank you resources. I gave and. Uh, people, everyone watching, people in the audience, we, pe everyone has this testimony. I gave and I got a raise, or I gave and God blessed me, mm -hmm. because he does like to reward us. Mm -hmm. What I want people to know is, when you set your heart to get your finances in order, God blesses that also. Mm -hmm. So it's not just that the numbers add up, it's that God supernaturally blesses you. Okay. So I have, te I have all sorts of testimonies of people in our church. I mean, even one of them's a widow that set her finances in order, and God blessed her with thousands of dollars she wasn't expecting. And I'll give you one more. When Debbie and I said we're going to get out of debt, we said we're not going to buy anything that's not a necessity until we're out of debt. And so one day Debbie comes to me. She's got the hair dryer in her hand, and she said, my hair dryer broke. This <laughs> is a <laughs> necessity. <laughs> In case you didn't know that, this is a necessity for you, for me. Yeah. We just run our fingers through. Yeah. We're fine. Okay. Yeah. Not for her. Okay. So I said, I agree with you. I'll go buy one right now if you want me to. But we're learning to pray about purchases. So let's just pray and ask the Lord to show us how he wants to meet this need. And when we prayed, we felt like the Lord said, I'm, I'm getting choked up telling this. We felt like the Lord said, wait one day. Wait one day. And so we go to church the next day, come home, and there's a package on our porch. And we open this up, and it's got a little note in it from a friend of ours. It was actually Carrie Job's mother, Carrie Job, the recording artist. Yeah. Mark and Sandy Job lived down the street from us. Oh. Sandy Job wrote this note and said, I was at Walmart yesterday, and I felt like God told me to buy this, and it was a hair dryer. It was God saying, if you'll do it my way, I will supernaturally bless you. That's why I say this book is different from just the how to get your finances in order. I'm trying to help motivate people that there is a blessing from God. There are open windows when we operate our finances the way God tells us to. So there's so much pressure now mm -hmm. to buy now and pay later, and it's so easy to do. And here's what I want to say about that. Again, all these, all these principles that we're calling financial principles, they're scriptural principles. And I show this in this book, Your Bible. For instance, God wired us for hope. He <laughs> wired us to have hope and joy. He wired us to hope for something and then to have joy when we get it. <laughs> what debt does is it takes that away. <laughs> oh my God. It takes away the joy and the hope. You don't even hope anymore. Because if you want it, you see it on TV, you just go down, you get it on your credit card. Now, not only do you not have the hope that God wanted you to have, you don't have the joy, you actually now have stress. Oh, my goodness. You have stress and anxiety. How are you going to pay for this thing? And, and it's just I don't bondage. Think, yeah, like if you get, let's say you, uh, you have a son or a daughter that's interested in basketball, and they hope for a basketball for Christmas, and you give them one, they have this great joy. Okay, you love that as a parent. I think God loves it when we hope for something, even if it's uh, something like that's material. Yeah. And we hope for it, and we wait for it, and we let God's timing come into play. And when we get it, we have this joy. I think he loves that. Yeah. But what, what the current financial culture does 
is takes away hope and joy that God designed us to have. Wow. wow. Do me uh, just a favor and kind of do the 90 second version of really what we're talking about here with this book in case somebody tuned in halfway through the show. Yeah, we're talking about stewardship. And I want to clarify that because I almost didn't want to use the word because it's a lot of times when people think about stewardship, they only think about money. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it's our fault because a pastor will say, we're going to have a stewardship campaign. Mm -hmm. And that means a raising money campaign. Got it. Or I'm going to do my annual stewardship message. It means I'm going to talk to you about giving. Got it. But stewardship is so much more than money even though it does involve money, it's the stewardship of your life in that you understand it's someone else's and you're going to manage it, it. because it's someone else's. I want you to think about that. Do we really believe that the money in our account is someone else's? Wow. Mm. That it belongs to God. Stewardship changes the way you view everything in your life. Mm. The way you view how you take care of your body, the way you view how you take care of your time, how you manage your time, how you manage your finances. This is such a bigger issue than just simply managing and getting our finances yeah. on a budget. Yeah. This is that I understand that I am not my own. That's very clearly First Corinthians. You did you? He even says, do you not know wow. yeah. you are not your own? You don't belong to you. You were bought at a price. And here's the great thing about that. You say, well, if God owns it all, Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and all the fullness thereof, all the people, and yet you were bought. Here's the great thing. God owns us. We literally walked away, and God bought us back. Wow. That's what the word redeem. Redeemed, deem is value. Redeem is to revalue. God revalued us by the blood of his own son wow. and bought us back. This book is so much more than a book about how to handle your finances. It's about how we view our life and how we view God. The Lord gave me what I'm calling the 10 financial commandments. And I put them in the book. And also the teaching from the book that I have created just for TBN. Okay. I'm covering there the 10 financial commandments. Right. And I line them up with the 10 commandments. Yeah. So there are 10 financial commandments line up with the 10 commandments. Like the one about not coveting is not keeping up with the Joneses. Wow. Don't try to keep up with your neighbor. Don't covet. God says that. That affects your finances too. The first commandment, though, is not to have any other gods before him. So put God first. So the first thing we do in our finances is we put God first. That means every time I get paid, where does the first money that leaves my account, where does it go? Hmm. And it should go to the kingdom. That means I'm putting God first, not just in my prayer time that day or in my heart or my marriage and family and all that's important. But in my finances, I'm saying to God, God, you're first. Before I pay the bills, I'm not going to pay the bills and see if I have enough left over for God. I'm going to give to God the first 10%. I believe that's why he invented the tithe. And for me, I don't know why he chose 10%. 10 is a number of testing in the Bible, 10 commandments. 10 times God tested Israel in the wilderness. 10 times God tested Pharaoh's heart with plagues. 10 days of testing in Daniel chapter 1 with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 10 virgins were tested with five, five were wise, five with foolish, with oil. 10 days of testing are listed in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. So 10 is a number of testing. But, so, but I think the reason he chose 10% is everybody can do it. Hmm. it. It doesn't matter if you make you know, $3,000 a month or $30,000 a month. It's the same for everybody. It's just 10%. But it's a test to see every time I get paid, am I going to put God first? That is the first financial commandment. It's the first commandment. And when we talk about being a good steward, that is the first commandment to being a good steward. And that is that I'm going to return to God the first 10%. That teaching, the exclusive teaching companion piece to this is really stepping through all of that. That is going to be one of the more important resources that goes along with the book because are those exact things in the book or is this expanded teaching? Well, what I did was I put those 10 principles in the book, but in the teaching that I'm doing for you guys, I, I'm, I'm listing it out as and calling it. Now I'm going through lots of things, but two of them 
because I can't do all 10 in, in, in one, just one time. So two of those, I'm going through the 10 financial commandments, and I'll explain what each financial commandment is and how it lines up to the 10 commandments. Okay, give us another one. Um, well, uh, this is going to uh, kind of be amazing what I'm going to use, the one I'm going to use. Uh, it's really simple, is thou shalt not steal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but debt is stealing from yourself because you're taking future income to pay present expenses. Oh, my goodness. So many people don't think about that. One of the chapters in the book is I have you are the CFO of you incorporated. Wow. You're the chief financial officer of you incorporated. See, the problem is not, here's what we think. The problem is people think, the problem is I don't make enough. No, the problem is you're not managing what you do make. Mm -hmm. And God can't bless you. He can't. He wants to bless you, but he can't bless you if you're going to be a poor steward. Think about the parable of the talents, and those talents are, are pieces of money. We talk about that as like you might have talent or skill. That's not what Jesus was talking about mm. because a talent is, a, is a, an amount of a money. A coin. Yeah. And, yeah, it's a coin, and I explained that about it. And it but was the, worth a lot of money. It was worth a, a lifetime. A lifetime. It was a lifetime. Just yeah, one. A, ten th a, a, a talent of silver is 10,000 denarii. A denarius is a day's wage. Mm -hmm. 300 denarii is a year's wage. 10,000 denarii is 33 and a third year's wages. 33 and a third year was a lifetime of work. Matter of fact, that's how long Jesus lived, 33 and a third. The other thing is you started apprenticing with your father in Jewish culture when you were 12. When you were 17, you went to work. You retired when you were 50 in Jewish culture. But life expectancy was 55 to 65. So that that's called, so Jesus gave five, two, and one. Even the guy that, that had one, do what? How do you do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you retire 50? <laughs> so Jesus, so this one, this guy gets one talent. He still has a full lifetime of wage, yeah. but he didn't do anything with it. Mm. Here's the other thing that's amazing about that. It's in Matthew 25. The one that had five and increased to five, the one that had two and increased to two, they heard, well done, good, good and faithful servant. Okay, we hear that all the time. We always hear, I want to hear the Lord say to me, well done, well done, good and faithful servant. Here's who he said it to the people who increased the finances that he gave them. Wow. Only good stewards in the Bible heard, well done, good and faithful servant. So this is extremely important. This book is so much more than a book about how to handle your finances. It's about how we view our life and how we view God. To thank you for your support, we want to send you Pastor Ron for making your gift a I think it's so important what you said, that, that the mindset is, well, I don't make enough already. Mm. Um, and so what, how important is it for me to even, okay, say I make $5, you know, is that really that important that I follow the, the principles yeah. of God's Yeah, word? and Jesus addressed it in Luke 16. If you're not going to be faithful with a little, I can't give you much. Wow. I just can't do it. So, and let me, let me, uh, I know we're about to run out. So let me tell you one more thing, because I really want people to understand beyond blessed is not about materialism. Mm -hmm. It's not about making more money. It's about being blessed so much so that it's beyond what we have so we can bless someone else. Mm -hmm. Got it. So Debbie and I were going on vacation uh, several years ago. We used to always take cash because we didn't trust ourselves. Now we'll use the credit card and we pay it off at the end of the month, always. But we're on we're on, we're uh, on vacation. This family comes in, mother, father, four children. They start adding up what they're ordering. They share meals. I, I can tell they're being good stewards. And then they prayed when the meal came. That morning in my quiet time, I was kind of laughing with the Lord because out of habit, I had brought a whole bunch of cash with me, $1,000, 10 $100 bills. And I had it in my wallet, and I, and I just told the Lord, Lord, thank you for bringing me to a place that I can use the credit card and not have to worry about it because I have savings in the bank, and I have it in my budget for our vacation. But it's kind of funny I got all this cash with me. I'm sitting there looking over at this family, and at the moment, it, it's just like the Lord said to me, now you know why you brought all that cash. Wow. Yeah. And Debbie and I went over to him, and I said to him, I noticed you prayed over your meal. I noticed you also counted what you were ordering. You're being a good steward. And here's the main thing about the book. God does bless us when we give. He also blesses us when we're good stewards. Yeah. 
God supernaturally blesses us. And so I told him, I have some money. I want to give it to you. The father told me, this will pay for our whole vacation. Mm -hmm. You don't know what this means. But I told those four kids, I don't want you to ever forget the day that a stranger paid for your vacation because God told him to because your mom and dad are good stewards. Maybe everyone is starting to understand why it was a mandate by my father to find <laughs> and to get Pastor Robert Morris and this message. And we love... Today, we welcome you wherever you're watching. It was pretty good, wasn't it? I took it from the TV version because I thought it just really spoke to our hearts. Because people are saying, we're doing all that we're supposed to be doing, but we still have debt. We still aren't getting this. We still aren't getting that. Well, with financial stewardship, it really is woven into that uh, study. But I think Robert Morris brings it out just a whole bunch better. Okay? And I especially like the testimony about the hairdryer. They had prayed before they spent money. So if you're in debt, think about this. Um, you know, and way back, I remember when we went out to eat with our three kids, we had to, we had to look, you know, and tell the kids, this is how much we're going to spend. And we did that. We didn't use credit cards then. And didn't the, have them. Didn't, <laughs> we're not that old. Somebody <laughs> had them. But, but we did not put it on a credit card because that is the thing. And this is what the credit card companies are really looking forward to is that that card, you'll flip it out, and you'll spend that money, and then after a while you go, oh, we got to cover that now. That's more than I expected. And the stress is there, and the joy is gone. So we have to stop and think first, and just think if you took every, a hair dryer. How much does a hair dryer cost? You know, come on. But if you stop and pray, do you see what happened? God wanted to show them, I'm taking care of all of your needs. Stop trying to do it. But we try to do it, don't we? And we also want to covet our neighbor's goods because we want to have what they want. You know, look at I saw that. I want that. Can you afford it? Is the money in the bank? You know what I'm saying? If it's going to put you in debt, back away from it. And some of us that are our age, we say we're not in debt. We can, we can spend easier. We're, we're, still, we're still on a budget. Well, and like, because, like he says, the no commandment, budget. he says, thou shalt not steal. Yeah. Like he said, you're stealing from yourself. You know, right away, people read that commandment, thou shalt not steal, right away they think, they think of, oh, we're stealing from God. He says we're stealing from ourselves. So. Mm -hmm. I, you could listen to this over and over, and it is delicious. Well, the, the other thing is, you know, I don't know how many minutes long this was. Twenty. He had they had to condense this to get it onto that promo that they did on TVN. So yeah. there's a lot more to this, and Pastor and I will try to go through some of it this morning to to let you get a better understanding. I one thing I want to make sure we're not taking anything away from Andrew Walmack's teaching. No. Andrew Walmack and, and Pastor Morris work together at different times. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Their, their teachings intertwine with each other. So it says that, you know, we, we spend a, quite a bit of time on Andrew Walmack's uh, financial stewardship. Right. And we're not saying, hey, just forget about all this. Oh, no. no. You, no. We, we work it together. Well, it's still, I still have the bills. I still don't have this. I still don't have that. But what is the key for that? Why did God invent tithing? And he invented it. We didn't. Why did he invent tithing? That would keep us from greed and selfishness. Yeah. You know? Now, are you looking for places to... Remember, this isn't your money. This wasn't Pastor Kenny's money. No wonder he threw it so... <laughs> it was probably <laughs> mine. Let's <laughs> change. I want that change to get into paper dollars. <laughs> yeah, you got you know, but but let's go back again. Um, he wants to keep us from self-centeredness, selfishness, and aren't we supposed to love each other and help each other? What did he do when he went to that restaurant? He was waiting for the Lord to show him. 
he was going to spend that $1,000 cash on their family. All right? And how many of you have went someplace and God shows you, give to that people? Um, I, I think one of the very first times, this is a long time ago, we saw a man and a woman, and I think it was two little two little girls or two little boys, either one. And um, it was very noisy in the restaurant. As you look over, he was a military guy, but there was something about them. They stopped. They didn't hold hands like we do in the restaurant and pray, but they stopped. You know what we did? We talked. I should say I did, as Pastor Kenny was sitting there. I said, look at that. So the, or maybe you did talk to the waitress and said, would you bring us their bill and don't tell them who we are? We do that often. Why? Because we want to show people, look what God is doing so that they will pay attention to God. But he's doing that to keep us from greed and self-centered selfishness. You know? But I say again, some of us, we're out of debt. Our needs are met. I mean, you know, because of what we did when we were younger, uh, people with second marriages, what did you do in the first one? What did you do financially? Were you a good steward of money? Now you have the, the overflow. Isn't that what it's about? So God's not trying to get stuff from you. He's trying to get stuff to you. Okay? So I think that's... What else, Pastor Kenny, do you have? Well, the, the, you know, the one thing he uh, made sure he talked to that those rest of the family. Yeah. Some stranger was willing to pay for your meal or your vacation. It wasn't that he was trying to get patted on the back for doing it. Right. He said, I'm doing this because I see your parents being good stewards yeah. of what they have. Well, again, what he's seen was, you know, and and you, you, you guys probably as parents have experienced when in a restaurant with your kids or something, I want this, I want that, you know, it's not what the cost of it, but this this uh, parents said they were looking at what they could actually afford, and so uh, Pastor Moore has seen that, and that's why it was laid on his heart to go and and pay for their vacation, give them the the thousand dollars. So what it, what he's really doing through this all is he's teaching us to be good steward, because. You were bought with a price. He bought you. He redeemed you. Okay? He brought you out of going to hell. Right? Because you asked Jesus into your heart. But what he wants you to grow in that and spread that out. Now, I'm going to say this here, and then we're going to have a song. And we'll do that in place of the um, offering song, Debbie, I think. So if you want to get that ready... Never lost a battle by evolution. evolution. <clears throat> Evo. Yeah, that one. But just getting this again, God did this. He, he instituted the 10%, and we give over 10. I'm sure a lot of you do too. But he instituted this of a way to get to you. And you know what it'll do? It will work in your marriage. It will work at your job. It will work in every area of your life. So this isn't just about getting money. You know, I, I look, I'm, I'm, I'm a blessed woman. I know I am. I'm sorry, women, but I got the yeah, best husband. Yeah, you're married to me. Yeah, that's, that's right. They said pride comes before the fall. <laughs> I got to watch myself. Okay, but, but when, you, when you look at that, where are you at? What is happening in your marriage? What's happening at your job? What's happening with your children? What's happening? Are you a lone ranger doing what you think is right? Again, the money is not yours. It's God's. Now, look up those scriptures and get a, get a picture of that. Now, you want to get that song ready? Did you have one more thing to say? Yeah. Uh, um, he talked about people that are unbelievers that are blessed. And there is. We, we all know people that are unbelievers that are mm -hmm. really blessed financially. But he, like he says in here, uh, God cannot keep blessing them because they're stealing, they're stealing from themselves. Yeah. What does he mean by that, they're stealing from themselves? 
Well, he's, they're not taking any of their money and blessing somebody else with it. Mm-hmm. You, know, they, you know, many wealthy people know a lot of families that could use help, but are they willing to help them? That's, that's what, in this book, when he's uh, teaching on stewardship, that's what he's trying to get across. You know, so, um, and so then what you want to do is look at it, wealthy people. I, now, just think about it, wealthy people that don't know Jesus, but they give. They're going to get blessed. Did you get that? Now, you get people that aren't born again, they're wealthy, but they're very tight with their money. Cheapskate. I want you to look into their family. I want you to look into their life. Do they have joy and peace in their marriage, in their home? What did they have? Think on that. Was there sickness through the whole thing? Were they just nasty people? I mean, and what kind of memories did they leave behind for you? I hope what we leave for our kids are good. But you got to look. Can you have joy? Can you have all these things? We keep on going back to that thing. When you do it God's way, yes. But see, you can do whatever you want. But I would suggest, and I think I'll make some po- copies of this tape or, you know, that you can get it from here and listen to it again and again and get it in because it is delicious. And I'm going to say this. We women, several, and we're doing it as couples now, many of us, and um, when we go out to lunch, the ladies, okay, the second last place we went to, the ladies left a $50 tip, and that was really good. God told me, have the church give 50. That guy got a $100 tip. That was far more than what was on that receipt. Guess what? They're going to listen to you when you have something to say. But God is the one that's going to do the multiplying. But it's going to come back to you where you're going to have peace, you're going to have joy, unspeakable and full of glory. That's what it's all about. So... Can we play that? And it, yes, I'm uh, sorry. You know, when he talked about having hope and joy, mm-hmm. th- that's something that we need to be looking at. We see what's going on in our country with our government and the whole thing. We, we still got to make sure we keep our hope. We as Christians, we know who's going to win in the end. But the thing is, I, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this rumblings and rumblings about People are losing their joy over this. They are. And that's what, when I was listening to that, that's what I thought of. Hey, we got to make sure we keep our joy of what's happening in this country because mm-hmm. we know we're going to win in the end. Amen. It may take some time. It took him 17 years to, re, to write this book. So, you know, don't think it's going to happen this week, yeah. next week, next month, or whatever. Amen. But keep your joy. Don't lose Amen. your joy of what's going on in this country today. Now, does everybody have this book, God's Creative Power for Finance? Who does not have this book? You're, you don't have this book? Oh. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't, because she's onto this thing. She'll Whoa. put it to use. Yeah. You know what? Just, just take the Word of God and feast on what that Word says to find out what is holding you back. You know, when we were in prayer this morning, oh, boy, I was having fun. I didn't want to leave that room. Listen, you guys, we start at 8.15, but it'd be wonderful if you could be there at 8 already so you can get the flavor of it. And Wednesday night, we start at 7.15. Is it 7.15? 6.15, yeah. We, oh, guys, we're just getting started. The thing is, we're seeing what's coming out of that. But did you notice the last two times what happened? What happened the last two times? The enemy kind of got in there, didn't he? Kind of screwed up the signal back there. Yeah. Two different times. That's what happens when you're doing something really good for God in the kingdom. The enemy, he's just a smart. He's just a smart. He knows where to get. So when that happened back there now two times, we need to come up against that. Yeah. Just cast him out. Get him out of there. 
that well, he we'll has, just start singing. That he has no authority. We'll sing solo or whatever. We'll just sing it. We can do it. We can start praying in tongues and just run right up. Remember, remember, he's been defeated, declawed. The devil has no power over us. That's right. We have the power over them. So we're going to give it this time. And remember, when you praised and worshiped this morning, when we started, what were you doing? You were receiving your healing. Remember the first song? You were receiving your healing. What else were you receiving? Listen always to those to the words of a song, and you take it by faith. Do you understand that? It is good all the time. And this morning I got blessed with a hallelujah handshake, and the Lord said, give it. And I said, oh, and I went over and I gave another hallelujah handshake with that. Woo! You know how good that feels? Yep. Given to somebody else. But let's play that. Let's stand, would we? What? Remember, the church is supposed to be the wealthy. Did you get that? We're supposed to be out there. When the banks get in trouble, we're supposed to go there and help them out. Right? People come to you and say, oh, could we have some money? And we say, uh, I'm going to have to pray about that. Well, I need money to go on vacation. No, you don't, honey. You need to get your finances in. You need to give. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know what? You look at that. Just How many families are happy? How many families, everything is going just great? See, God has given us the solution. So now I stand in agreement with each one of you and for your family, and I plead the blood of Jesus over this offering, this tithe, and that the hands of Right there in front of you, your corporation, you will exceed and excel in everything you put your hand to because you're taking the word of God and you're putting it first place. What did he say in the first commandment? Honor the Lord with all of your heart. All Go in and look at the commandment. Look at that. See, God fulfilled those for us through Jesus Christ. But we take them in to the new, doing what? Following it in and under grace through Jesus Christ. So who do we take first? God. Then our family, then our ministry. Amen? Amen. Oh, Father, thank you. We give you the glory and the honor. You are so good. You're so great. You're the most wonderful Father in the whole world, and we praise you, and we thank you. God bless you. I'm done. Have a wonderful day. Amen.